the adventure truck with a twist of an off-road appearance. Ocean Honda has given us a 2023 Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive RTLE. In this series, we're going to show you what that HPD package is. With a comparison to Nissan, Toyota, Hyundai, Chevy, Ford, it's a pack segment when it comes to mid-size pickup trucks, whether it's off-road or on-road. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The Honda Ridgeline RTLE with the HPD package starts off with the grille, getting the matte black finish, and you're gonna have the chrome that's going to integrate into your LED headlamps and daytime running. And on the lower bit, you'll have the gloss black with ground clearance at 7.6 inches. This is not gonna be the best. The HPD package also adds your flared out fenders, which now you can option this without the HPD package. So it's something that I kind of wish they didn't do that because it almost takes away from the segment of what you're getting. Normally it will be bronze HPD 18 inch multi-spoke wheels. These are in matte black, which the dealership did afterwards. And I think it looks more athletic with this, a little bit more of an off-road twist. The front disc reading at 12.6, the rear at 13 inches. IVTM4 all-wheel drive, heavy-duty automatic transmission cooler, integrated closed box frame with unibody construction, intelligent traction management, four-wheel independent suspension, a McPherson strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your stabilizer bar and your coil springs. Weight distribution, 57.1, 42.9, limited slip, brake actuated differential. A length at 210.2 inches with the wheelbase at 125.2 inches. The Chevy Colorado will be the longest, but this is not too far off from it. Because we have the HPD package, I would have liked to see gloss black around the window treatment instead of the chrome, which is with the RTLE. I kind of wish that they added a little bit more to it. Instead, they just add the HPD graphics on the back. The lug nuts will be black. That's part of the package. It does look off-road and rugged, and yet performance-driven, all blended in, and that's what Honda's trying to take away from this. When you're looking at the Ford Ranger, you're going to be more rugged on your everyday use. This is gonna drive more like a car because of that unibody construction. LED tail lamps, dual exhaust outlets, towing up to 5,000 pounds, standard all-wheel drive, with a payload over 1,500 pounds. That's quite a bit, considering this is a mid-sized pickup truck. Dual action tailgate, it doesn't have soft to open. 64 inches long, 60 inches wide, 16.7 inches tall. You get your LED interior lights, giving us 33.9 cubic feet of storage, but you can open this up just like a car door with an additional 7.3 cubic feet of storage with your spare tire. You also have a drain plug, so that way you can keep it nice and clean naturally aspirated V6. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Naturally aspirated V6. That's the notes that you're getting out of that. And when you're looking at a rugged performance truck, for an on-road rival, there's not too many that's going to back the performance that this one does with its 3.5 liter VTEC V6 engine producing 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission with shift by wire, achieving 18 to 24 MPG, getting a zero to 60 under seven seconds with a quarter mile 
around 15.4 seconds. And what these numbers tell me is that this is the fastest variant for a mid-size pickup truck, which is not necessarily something that's a wow factor because you want something that can go off-road. We have an off-road look. The HPD package does not do anything to suspension, doesn't alter the ride height, nothing to take this off-road. Going back to the rivals, they will be more of a harsh drive and it's gonna be louder in the interior. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTL LE HPD as we go inside, go over the tech and take this for our drive. Going inside the RTLE HPD package, you're going to receive 39.5 inches of headroom, 40.9 inches of legroom, which is going to be better than the Santa Cruz for headroom, better than the Colorado for a legroom. Leather bucket front seats, 10 way power seat adjustment for the driver, four way power seat adjustment for the passenger. You also get the captain seat maneuverability because you don't have anything to rest your elbows here. You just have a storage container that you can open up. You have a little storage compartment with a USB and a 12 volt, and it's a pretty deep storage pocket. Your cup holders are surrounded with the satin aluminum. Your push to get into gears, another USB and 12 volt right here with your wireless charging pad and a storage pocket with your heated seat buttons. Try climate control, everything has to be done through the front. The satin aluminum goes into the dash underneath your air vents and the gloss black goes into the center here. Eight inch touchscreen, we have navigation. So you have the pinch, you have the swipe, click into the home button, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, you got your truck bed audio, Honda Home Link, and you can add more wedges here. Put it into reverse, we have a reverse camera with full trajectory, you can change the camera layout to make it easier for your reversing. The steering wheel is leather wrap, multi-function whip paddle shifters. It is heated. The gauge cluster has a digital reader in the center and it will also do your turn-by-turn -turn navigation. The dashboard is more flat derived so it makes it easy for everyday use. Eight speaker premium sound system and here is where your blind spot monitoring light is. Everyday materials, software you rest your elbows, one touch up and down for the front windows, memory for the driver's seat. Two storage tiers with a cup holder in the front and on the lower you get a larger one. For the back seat, headroom at 38.8 inches, legroom at 36.7 inches. Six foot three, I can fit without too many issues. For the back seat, we get two USB ports, a storage tier, and we get our air vents with storage beyond both of the front seats. Door panel, get your everyday materials on the top. It's gonna to be more sport derived for your elbows. You get a cup holder and an area for a larger cell phone, nothing on the lower tier. The seats will fold up at a 60-40 split and the floor is completely flat except for the track. The nice thing though is as you can see, you can put cargo underneath the seats with them sitting upwards. Sitting into the center, headroom is not too much of an issue because it's sort of carved out for you. Leg space, I'm kind of against the back of the front seats in the position I'd be sitting. However, feet, butt, and shoulder space because of the way they've sit the front seats in this vehicle. You can actually fit three adults without too many issues, whether that's not the case with the rivals. 280 horsepower with 262 pound-feet of torque, one engine option, standard all-wheel drive. These are things that are actually pretty good for the vehicle. And I mean, towing isn't bad either. 5,000 pounds for a mid-sized truck. When I was looking for something to tow my boat, the first thing I was looking at is something that tows 5,000 pounds. And surprisingly, a lot of vehicles don't actually do that. So when you're getting that, and this is under 50 grand, the drive of this is going to be more car-like. So for somebody that's entertaining to look at a truck and they're trying to get out of an SUV, or they just wanna step up from a car, this will actually feel the same, in which it's smooth ride, it's pretty quiet, it's composed. Stop in the middle of the road and we're gonna give her some gas. She gets up to speed quick. And the nice thing too is because this is a V6, you don't really have a drone note. 57.1, 42.9 weight distribution, over 210 inches of length. So dynamics is not necessarily going to be its cup of tea. However, everyday use, it can do that. That's gonna take me to some things I like and dislike. And to start off with is what I like. You can fit a four by eight piece of plywood in the cargo flat. 
because we don't have wheel wells that's going to make it an obstacle. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is the storage here in the center because you can actually use this to write on. And the same thing for the dash. You could just throw your papers on there and drive if you're doing some kind of construction. I don't necessarily think you'll do a lot of that with this, but the payload is quite good, over 1,500 pounds. So you do have capabilities to do things and you have areas that you could work in the interior. Turn radius at more or less a stop point is going to receive about two and a part lane. Let's rock and roll. Check the brakes. The last thing that I like is you have adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and it's actually quite good. Whenever you're getting into trucks, you usually have to spend much more than $50,000 in order to get the safety features in which you're getting in this. On the disadvantage, three things that I dislike. I like these seats, the way it has this captain. It's just the seat's too small and I'm pushed right onto it. So I have to actually sit like this in order to use the armrest. The second thing that I dislike is in the back seat. Cargo, you really just have an area for one bottle in the door panel maybe a smaller cell phone. The last thing that I dislike is Honda doesn't offer any 360 degree reverse camera. I would like to see that in a lot of their models because it would make it easier, especially in this, over 210 inches of length. You'll have more interior space than the rivals thanks to the length being over 210 inches. Plus you have more lighting in the interior cabin so you know where your cup holders is and your storage pockets in the door panel. This is definitely an everyday use vehicle. You got more than enough capabilities to conquer pretty much anything. Now, obviously, if you want to do off-road stuff, that you're going to have to probably go into different variants or just do some aftermarket work to this so that way you can conquer some of that. It's not going to be as rugged, but it's something that's more easy driven and something that if you haven't driven a truck, you can get into this and you're going to say, wow, it's just like a car or an SUV and I have so much storage, plus I can tow and you can't do that with a sedan. I like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTLE for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise, website, and Instagram, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rods.